Welcome to reading the New Testament in Original Greek. We're reading in this session, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Baptistis veo Isus eftis anevi apo tu idatos, ke idu ine ochthisan i urani, ke iden to pnegmatu theu, katavenon osi peristeran ke erhomenon epafton. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. The Greek text of Vaptisthes is from the verb vaptizo, theta indicating that this is in um, passive forms, and then the ending, thes together, and the aorist um, participle. This is a nominative case and a masculine. Now we have to find the subject that it, it modifies, right? The oesus is the, the, the subject and a masculine. Now, having been baptized, however, or in a circumstantial participle, um, as in the NRSV, when Jesus was baptized, or after Jesus was baptized, it does it grammatically, as both are correct. After or when Jesus was baptized, however, O Jesus, Jesus, now we find the verb, anevi. Anaveno is the verb. Now, if you look at the verbal changes in an aorist form, we have evi. Of course, I, I have uh, removed the um, prefix ana. It's only for a veno. Um, in Erasmus, this is a vino. Now, from evin, um, together with the prefix alpha from the ana falls off, and anevin is the first person. Making from there to the third person, anevi is the third person singular, right? Then Jesus went or, or moved up. Why? Because veno, the meaning is to step, to move. It describes the motions, movement. Now, ana means, as we talked about before, means up, right? So he moved up, he stepped up. Eftis is adverb, immediately, right after. He moved up right after. Now, we have apo plus genitive. From, from the water. Idatos is an idur. Um, in a genitive forms, idatos, taking from there the third declensions, os, e, a, right? Now, from the water. Oh, Jesus, after Jesus was baptized, however, Jesus went up an evi, immediately of this, from the water. Keidu, ine ochtisan. Now, we have the verb now. In the this is the um the weird ver verbal changes. If you look at from actually from the anigo, and the word is anigo to open. If you look at the uh, the verbal change of anigo, anixo as a future, inixa as an um erish, with the sigma there, an augmentation instead of the augment with because of the augmentations uh, the vocal stretch of there alpha to eta. Now there is a, in a parenthesis in neoxa. Aneoxa. This is another verbal change. Why? If you look at without prefix an, that's an eagle. And there are some oigo. If you look at the verbal change there, you understand. Eagle, and also in other forms, ignimi. The verbal change ixo, and it changes from there, eoxa. Eoxa, eogme. Eochthin. Now there is an absolute omicron and also, uh, sorry, the omega with the yota subscriptum. That, that taking that verbal change with the prefix an, making here an eochthisan. I'm sorry, ineochthisan. This is the modern Greek pronunciation. Um, so you understand the verbal change why. Um, became the eochthisan. Now, thesan. Theta, of course, indicates it's a passive. And together with the ending, isan, 
is a third person plural. Something the plural was opened in a passive, right? Idu, behold. To him or for him. Afto. This is in a square uh, brackets that's not sure in a text critically when they uh, when the scholars reconstruct, right? Now we have the subject of the verb third person plural visa. E urani. Now the heavens. Of course, the heavens in the Old Testament or in a subtrusent. Sometimes it's used in singular, sometimes um, many cases also. Um, it's also used in plural. Iurani says in a plural. That's why we have the verb in third person plural. The heavens were opened. Okay? Now, ke idon. Idon is not an e. Ipon or Ipen, um, now we have Idon. When it's a P, it's a speaking with a mouse, Pi, right? And Idon, V is a C to C. So he saw. Now it's a singular, right? The Jesus saw. Now the math is indicating here. Do um, Spirit or the Spirit of God. Do Theu. We have another again, <clears throat> excuse me, katavenon. Now we have the participle ending on. Of, of course, the veno is um, that we have seen this one already with prefix, different prefix, kata. Kata venon. Veno means to move, to step. Now, kata. When it's talking about, when it's speaking of the motion, it means downwards from above. Okay? So from above or downwards. So, veno, to step, to move. So move downwards. Okay? Gata veno. This is what it means. To, so that it means um, in a... In a Better English term is what well, came down. Because it's in a participle also, we have to find a subject. It's a neutral. Did we have any neutrals um, here? Yes, the right before. Do pnevma to theo. So it's the, the subject of katavino. So the spirit of God came down. O C. Now what is this OC? If you look at separately, divide OS E, then it will make better sense. OS means as. E is also, uh, um, AE is the when uh, we haven't really talked about this one, but it's an if, right? As if peristeran. Peristeran means a dove, it's simply the noun that we need to know. Um, the ending an, and also after at homenon, right? This is an all in accusative, so making grammatical connection to topunevma. Is topunevma um, to theu is in a nominative case and accusative, case, but actually technically it's you know in a neutral nominative and accusative. The form is the same. Even, but even, he saw dopnevma. So we know dopnevma here is an accusative. So this accusative grammar is connected with later on um, modifying nouns or the participle et homenon. Right? Et homenon et Of course, then we know et homenon, or homen, um, et homenon is um, coming down. Epafton, to him, or upon him. Okay, um, I hope it clarifies grammatically and the syntax of how to make the connection between. I hope you have enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment, and I'll look forward to our next session. Thank you.